Yo, what it do, man? This is Grindface and a the Therapist, man. I'm Demetrius. And I'm Sunia. We've been together for 28 years. We've been married for 23, 24, probably 25 now. But um, who's counting? This is episode 26, and we're going to get on the topic of dating. So, Sunia, since I guess um, middle school, early high school, you really w- wasn't out there in the dating world because I snatched your ass up at a real young age. You know what I'm saying? So, um, let's let's talk about how how does one choose the type of person they date? Like, you know what I'm saying? Is it mo- we go based off looks, their mindset, or you know what I'm saying? In general, timing of today, you think people w- how they choose a date? I think the looks is going to get your attention. That's just like when you apply for a job, right? The application gets your attention. But then the interview, I think when you, after the attraction, then what? Because attraction is not going to hold your attention for the long term, right? You can have somebody that's beautiful, but they're airhead or, they, you know, they're they're not intelligent. They, they don't fall into the category of how you want to build. So then you have to interview them, right? Just like a company has someone come in and, interview them and see if they're a good fit for their company. And not only should the employer interview the employee, the employee should be interviewing the employer, right? So asking the key questions, what are your goals? You know, what are your faith? Asking real life building grounding questions that you're looking at for the long term. Then because then you have to look at a person like, you know, I'm I'm building a company. You are your company. You're building yourself. You're building so your So the legacy. person your 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 temple, your body, you would consider that as a person's company. Yes, I am my company. So when I bring someone to my company, what asset, what do they bring to the table? Now, do they come through the front door or back door? They come through the front, okay, front door. Okay, just ask them. Then, you know, you look at, you know, their references, you know, who, who are their friends? You know, who are the people that they have around them? I believe in even dating people in a group date. Cause then you get to see what their friends are like. First time they're gonna be on their best behavior, honeymoon. Second time they little open. I, I up. believe you should give them some alcohol. Third time, you know what I'm saying? You really like okay. You're you're gonna see the type of people that the person hangs around with. And this is the thing: our families are handpicked. You don't have a choice over your family, but your friends. You chose them because you have things in common with them, and typically. Most people, birds of a feather flock together. It's not cliche. It's not a nah, lie. It's true. a lot of people that will argue on that. Nah, on that it's point. true. You know what I'm saying? Because sometimes I have my ratchet friends like I have fun with. No, my it's true. So you saying. It's true. But even you? if you have your ratchet friends, you believe in their ratchet behavior because if you didn't, you wouldn't want to be around that. Okay. Right? So you, you're you around people that you have things in common with. Not to say that you do everything that they do, but there's things about It's entertaining them. to you. Exactly. There's things about them that you like, because if that's the case, you wouldn't be around them. Yes, we have all flaws. But if you see my circle, you see me. We're not the same people, but the mindset is similar in, 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 in many aspects. Some of the same, like we don't agree and think everything the same, but they're bosses. You know, they're women of God. You know, they're 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 they have respect for themselves and their body. They carry themselves the same way. They're very intellectually inclined. They're go. I mean, as you know, publicly, because a lot of people have them hidden things that they do that they don't let people know. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm saying their character. Their yeah, character could mean one thing. You know what I'm saying? But you 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 pointing out these key points of your friends and your circles, but you don't know if they got an OnlyFans page. None of my friends have an OnlyFans. As they would, they some people don't. And what I'm just saying is, a lot of people don't share them dark secrets of their inner inner things or what they do, and you don't know that. Okay, again, none of my friends have an OnlyFans page, and at the end of the day, if if you're saying somebody is your friend, this is not an acquaintance. This is not. So, and I'm not going to say you know every detail of somebody's life, right? As I was just pointing out. Because you you don't. But at the same time, when you have a friend, I think there's enough. People tell on themselves all the time. You can only pretend to be somebody for so long, right? Eventually, you, the real you, are going to come, come out. And if you spend that much time with somebody and build that much of a relationship to say, that's my friend, I would hope that you would know somewhat about them to know their character. Man, I'm going to have to disagree because people hide shit. And, and, then and you're the not reason, being you. Because I, I know as in, in certain relationship, people hide shit from their spouse. And they, and if you go back to their old childhood, they won't tell their spouse certain things because they're probably embarrassed about shit and don't want to share it. 
And but this, the things that happened to him in childhood sculpt their personality as of today. And like I think what? that's Give a me very an example. I know of people that get molested as a child, but they they're not going to tell that, and their spouse don't know about that. But I think that's a key element. Hold on, but is that's that a key their element. Character or is that something? That it shapes. It them? shapes who they are. Yes, it shapes. So you tell me, as a therapist, that don't shape a person. It has a lot to do with the person you could become for the better, or for the worse. So these decisions this- is being made in this relationship behind something I don't know about. And that's what I'm saying. Some things is kept secret and you don't know the full scope of a person. And when you dating somebody, they don't share this. But you weren't dating them when they were molested. You you taking this into a whole psychological, a total different way. I mean, any part of the show, the fucking it, and the therapist. Is, but what I mean, the but point hold is. Hold on, because what you're saying is that that goes in a tra- trajectory of a whole different conversation. Because what we're talking about is who this person is today okay yes For a person a being molested yes. so can now be she want to stick to a certain topic and stay in the box <laughs> stay because in the you box ask me a question you know and you saying? going into yes this can mold a person to who they are as an adult that is a hundred percent true but if a person is molested and they're acting certain ways sexually they're promiscuous you don't have to know they were molested to know they're promiscuous. So I'm talking about their character today. So the the aftermath could be they're promiscuous or they don't like to have sex or there's certain things that's going on in the in the bedroom when it's, you know, when they become intimate. So but as, you know this. As as me as us dating, shouldn't this person know this? See, we on two, yes, but let me finish what I was saying because that's two different uh conversations and questions. Because you're seeing the result of the behavior of what happened to them in their childhood. So we were talking about my friends and character. So you're saying sometimes you don't know stuff about people. No, I don't know you got molested, but I do see you're promiscuous. Or I do know you don't like to have sex. That type, that part of the person I see, I'm aware of. But Okay, yes. But if you're trying to, because we, we date into build. You know what I'm saying? So if you ain't in it to build, well, I guess people date to have sex. People date, to, I don't know. But basically, I, I depends if you dating to build for long run. I think certain things should be exposed so a person could basically have the right to choose. You know what I'm saying? Correct. Like, yeah, I don't. Um, honestly speaking, I Correct. really don't want to deal with this situation because even well, we could take the molest off the off the window, out the window. Let's yeah, because we don't want to make a let's, person let's, that let's got go to, to be the bad. Let's person. go. They're not bad, but let's go to children. People when they dating, they like to hide their kids. They don't want to expose. What? They don't want to say they have nine kids, ten kids, that ain't five kids. You be dating. But what I'm saying, people keep that secret. But now then, then when they fall in love, oh, I love this person. First of now, all, that, that you got kids. Be a like hold on, well, what the fuck honestly, you mean you got kids? Honestly, that wouldn't be you know a secret. Saying? That would just be total manipulation and a lie. Who lies about not having kids? To me, that's like. Almost if hiding something you're embarrassed about because these- they don't want to be at a disadvantage before you get to know me. Because some people, like you said, they see, oh, I don't want to talk to them, but they, you didn't get to know the person. So I, I think some yeah. women and some men, you know what I'm saying, hide the fact that they have kids because they want you to see them first. But then if that person don't want to be involved and be a, a step parent. It's one thing you know to saying? not tell you they have kids because you didn't ask. But if a person specifically asks you how many kids you got and you lie about it, for me, if I was single, you're already a liar to me. And so at, to lie about something that simple, it's like, what else are you lying about? Lying about your kids is kind of like lying about your identity. Like who... Who lies about something like that? that? People do. And to people me, do. that that's like, and I can understand. But the thing is, what's, what's the questions to ask? And, and I can understand someone basically saying they lie about something like that because they've been treated unfairly because of their kids. But you got to understand, everybody that comes is not going to have that same type of mindset. And if somebody's not willing or wanting to build with you based on that, that's just not the person for you. Because even if you do, they end up do liking you. And then you do tell them that how many kids you had and now they're out. You just wasted time when we could have got to the bottom of this from the beginning. Amen. That's like somebody saying, I, they really don't want to have kids, but they meet someone and some person really wants to have kids 
and they withhold that information. Now you're a year, two year in, and this person is ready to have kids. And you're like, I never really want to keep you just wasted your time in their time because this could be questions that are asked in an interview, in an interviewing stage before you even get to that point. True. And, and, and I guess those is a part of because, uh, you know, some people be embarrassed. They don't know what type of questions they should ask or what should they. If you don't know much. what type of questions to ask, then you shouldn't even be in that space, because if you don't know what type of questions to ask, that only tells me one thing. You don't even know what you want. You don't know what you're looking for. You don't know who you are, because in order to know who you are, you have to know th that that sets up the stage to know what you want. So when a person tells me, I don't know what I want. OK, then you need to go back and be single for a while, spend time with you and know who you are. So you know what you want. I agree. If because you, you know what you want, you know exactly these. I'm gonna ask these 10 questions right here. Boom. You know what's you the deal breaker that. for me? You know, you know, OK, I need. I, these are my expectations. I tell people in, in therapy all the time when they're in couples, what are the rules in relationship? Like, what? We don't have no rules. Everybody has a rules, whether they're spoken or unspoken. A rule could be you're not to cheat on me. A rule could be you need to be home before midnight. A rule could be, you know, you need to help with these kids. You need to help. Every relationship has rules. They're just unspoken, sometimes not discussed. And these are the problems when entering into a relationship. These are key factors that are not talked about. Then it's like, well, what went wrong? Well, did you discuss this? Well, no, I just thought a person should assume. Why? These are all things you need to discuss before going into a relationship. It's like some people are with strip clubs. Some people are not. Some people are with porn. Some people are not. Some people are with open relationships. Some people are not. These are all conversations that should be discussed. You just shouldn't assume this somebody all, yeah, discussed during the dating phase. Yeah, because you shouldn't just assume that someone adheres to the same moral compass that you do or values because you think this is uh, something that everybody should do. No, this is what you do. Oh, you know, the big ones that people don't discuss and, and wait till they have a child. How they going to raise the kid? Not how to raise what, Discipline. what religion? spirituality, religion, <laughs> you know, and then it's like, they're all the way in. It's like, but I don't agree. All these things need to be discussed, you know, because then you know what you're dealing with. And then I say the background check, just like an employer, as an employer, we do a background check as a person, a criminal, the background check is you need to go around the family because the family is going to give you a blueprint idea of what type of person this person comes from you can hear stories of their past relationships and everything all you gotta else. do is look at the family like you know is this not to say because a person could be come from that and be the total opposite of that but at some point those issues are going to play a part if that person hasn't been filled um healed from those things with inside of the family um hierarchy or family norms or family culture because being around a person's family will tell you a whole lot the dynamics of the family, the dysfunction of the family, the healthiness. You're going to see all the pros and the cons if you go around the family. And I suggest you do that before just jumping into something with somebody so you can see how they are. I agree. You know, mom is calling the daughter a B. They call each other. This is how they talk to each other. Okay, this is how she's going to talk to our kids. Okay, you know, this is the dynamics. This is how they get down. This is how they communicate. Okay, this is why she communicates like this. And this is why he's going to be doing this. So it gives you an idea of the person as a whole. Now, again, sometimes people could be the total opposite of their <laughs> family. daddy flirting with everybody. This is how that nigga going to be. You know what I mean? It's <laughs> Seriously. Because you have uh, to look at the dynamics of the family to get a full picture of the person. Now, again, disclaimer, sometimes the fam, the person recognizes the family dysfunction, like, hey, I'm not with none of that. And and But typically when a person sees their family and sees the dysfunction, they typically minimize the, the interactions that they have with the family because of the dysfunction. But you'll learn all that being around the family. Yes, so that's, that's what are the, what, what, when you came around my family, what are some of the things that you was like, heck nah. Oh, um, when I came around the family, I was a kid when we came around the family. Um, 
I don't know. That was just um all all Christian folks that didn't live Christian lifestyles. <laughs> That's what I was like. Shit, everybody professed it was a Christian, but was all messy and drama like a motherfucker. Except for a few. But um, that's what I got out of it, you know. But it told you they were religious. And that's not why spiritual. I never I never committed to be a Christian. And that's sad because many times as children of God, we supposed to be that's why I believe in walking in like I talk it. People see I'm like what you see is really me in real life, online or offline. I don't change it, I don't turn it off because the only judge or jury for me is God. And I want him to be pleased with me, not people. And I believe that sometimes we will be the only light that people see. And it's like, what are you reflecting? Not to say that I'm perfect, but I always want to be true and walk with integrity because I may be the person that changes somebody's life. I never want to be the person that makes someone stumble because on what I'm doing. And they're like, hey, she's not really who she is. Am I flawed? Yes, I have many flaws. But when it comes to God, I don't play. That's why I never put a title on myself. I'm all that, but without a title. You all that without a title. Yes. So let's go to employment history and experience. And all this is out of my book, Love Goals, a blueprint to a healthy relationship. It's like a little guide that I wrote and I was inspired to write it because we were in Cabo and I couldn't believe these people had to be like in their forties. This was some years ago. I was in my thirties and it was two couples and a guy and a woman of the opposite couple were basically saying somebody came up if they got in a relationship and they weren't attractive, but the person was attractive and all they kept saying is, Oh yeah, you know, my boy, he said he came up cause he know, you know, his girls, this, she fine, this and this. And, and in my head, I'm just sitting there looking, listening to the superficial conversation. And I'm thinking to myself, they came up because of their looks the whole time. Y'all just talking about their looks. I have yet to hear what their mindset is like. You know what I'm saying? And it's it, so many people get caught up in image but no, but so 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 image. many men get caught up in image. It's it's like a bragging right to them. They like, but you got my a beautiful wife. wife my wife is beautiful. Dumb. You know what I'm saying? You they got don't a beautiful care. wife. She, she's there to be seen. Not, you, uh, not what they be seen, not, not her. You got a beautiful you know wife, and she's dumb. Or you got a beautiful wife, but she brings nothing to the table. You got to like. Do y'all realize beauty fades? No, at that, a certain that, age, and that's nobody's why they looking them. like. This is a, you, you get what I'm saying? So it's like, I tell my son, you know, cause society teaches you, oh, I, you know, I got to get this money and press this girl. I tell my son just like this. The best time to find your mate is when you broke because you know, they there, they there for you. It's not about the money. It's not what you can give them. And if you want to build with somebody, you want to know how that person is with you when you have absolutely nothing in your bank account or pocket. You don't want somebody to just mm-hmm. look good. You that's want somebody right. that's going to help you Sunil smacking was, all boy. Sunil was with me when I was going 50 cents on a bag of hot Cheetos. Like <laughs> I ain't got a dollar baby, but I got 50 cents. You want somebody to, you want to know that they're there for you. You know, there ain't no jumping off the ship when someone else come that look like they got more. And so I'm teaching him that now, you know, don't just be caught up in how somebody look. He know I give him the, what the first thing I ask, what's their mindset like? See, man, man, I don't know why man stuck on. They want a woman that everybody desire. You know what I'm saying? But that's what weird. is that? Like, I don't understand you know, that. Don't like know. when it's men like, want their women half naked on social media to me, I don't know. Okay. We were in, um, big bear and I just found this to be so disrespectful. So a family member's friends, they wanted to play this game. And the game was like, oh, what's your favorite sexual position? What's your sexual fantasy? Now, mind you, it's couples in there. It's married people. It's men and women. But mostly everybody in there is in a relationship. But the people want to play the game is single, two females. And in my head, I'm thinking, this is so disrespectful. Like, me sitting up here saying my favorite sexual fantasy in front of other men, regardless if they're married or not, is not only disrespectful to myself, it's disrespectful to my spouse. Because this is my thing. Why do you want to hear what somebody's sexual fantasy is? Like, why do you want the blueprint to someone else's bedroom? And so I just couldn't understand, like, how they thought this was a healthy conversation. To me, this sounds like some swinger stuff. Because I just didn't believe that everybody in the room was just thinking that conversation. No, some minds is going in some places. 
And you kind of opening up the door for some stuff to happen and not realizing it. If one of my friends came and started telling me about their sexual experience in front of my husband, you getting checked immediately. Thank God I don't have friends why like that. telling you the sexual shit in private? What? Oh, now he on something else. Me and my friends. Because it's the same shit. It, this it, is the thing. You, you saying stuff in front, of, in front of your husband and you feel like it's a disrespect, but you telling me because at the same time she's telling you the same thing in private. You still can visualize the shit her man is doing. This is the thing. It's the same shit. Right? I'm not giving nobody no blueprint to what me and my husband do in our bedroom, period. My friends and I, they're married. A lot of them are in relationships. We don't discuss our sex lives and what we're doing. We may discuss something about sex, but it's never a conversation. Yeah, girl, I had him like this. That We just don't do that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't want to know what you're doing to your man in the room. And I'm definitely not about to tell you what I'm doing to my, because at the end of the day, to me, call me old school or whatever. I just feel like it's sacred, but getting back to what I was saying. So employment history and experience, right? Which is chapter four in my book. You need to know like past relationships, not to say that the person's going to tell you the truth because they're probably not, but asking them, have you ever been in a long-term relationship? You know, are you, you know, are you a serial cheater? Are you? Are a you nigga a, won't tell you that. <laughs> they're probably not going to tell you that. But based on uh, his, his, based on her or his, you know, history of. What like, is a serial hold cheater? Hold on, like an employer, right? When I look at applications, when I see that you got, you, you was here six months, here three months. It's like you jump around different um, and um, you go to different jobs frequently. You're not a person I want to hire. Because it's either you're bored quick or it just shows you're not committed. You have too many jobs. And I'm going to tell you, employers, look at this. When you have a bunch of different jobs and you haven't stayed anywhere a year, and then you, and then the crazy thing is you'll see a bunch of jobs and none of them have any rhyme or reason. Some you, women like a nigga with two jobs. Yeah, look, hey. That's what I'm saying. It, <laughs> this, to each their own. That's why you had this interview. You uh, may want an open relationship. You want to be the side chick. You may not be dating a bill. You may be dating to have sex, but it's consequences for that. And it talks about it in the book. You know, we in a, a new world where certain things is slut shaming people. And so it just depends on your values and what you uphold. Right. That's why it's different podcasts. And I think that's what it comes down to. What, what your values and what, what's your standards and, you know what I'm saying? And but the thing is to be upfront. Don't be lie, don't lie about it. You know what I'm saying? And that's and that's where the problem could get in is when you lying about your lifestyle and you just you take the other person for a ride that they, they, they didn't want to take that ride. And that's why I believe in being honest, because then you give the person a choice to choose. Because there's many cheaters. Many people that's like, hey, I got this wife, I got this husband, I got this going on. You want to be on the team or not? And some people agree to be on the team. I can respect the person that's telling you everything up front and you agree because now you're making a conscious decision to join the team. But when you're lied to, you didn't give the person the, cho the choice to choose if they wanted to participate in that or not. What they say, real players going to tell you the truth and you're going to either choose up or not. And I agree with that because if someone tells you all the logistics of the situation, you can't do nothing but respect it. Because if you in it, you decided to be in it by choice. That's a coin right there. You know what I'm saying? You what decided are, to be in it by choice. What are what are some ways you lied to me in the beginning? In the beginning, how I used to lie to you? Yeah. Honestly, I was truthful to you in the beginning. I, I was in I, the beginning. I, yeah, I told you up front, like you know what I'm saying, because you didn't tell me up front about no female. I start lying me. once we start having sex. I think that's where it does. You know what I'm saying? That's where I, I kind of cared, and I was like, I didn't want to lose her, so I ain't gonna tell her certain shit. And the crazy but thing in, is, in I found out anyways. Yeah, because my homeboy was telling you everything. You know what I'm saying? Some but, stuff I put together on my own though. But um. Yeah, up front in the beginning, because we, we was dating. I mean, we, it's like, I was telling you everything. No, we weren't dating at that point. We were actually in, really in a relationship. <laughs> I don't, yeah, as a kid, if it wasn't If we ain't had sex, we ain't wasn't in a relationship. We what was it? dating. We were in a relationship. <laughs> <laughs> we was in a relationship oh, a years, man. long time before we started having sex. Everybody <laughs> in the city knew we were in a relationship. No, we was dating. 
We were dating. It. How were we dating? Because we was. We was talking to each other. We was learning. We was learning each other. You know okay, what I'm saying? Okay, so let me ask you like, this. So if we if we weren't in a relationship, how did everybody know that you were my boyfriend? And, and if we were not in a relationship, you definitely wasn't letting me know if you was talking to other people. We was dating. Dude, just shut I up was, lying. Now you just sounding yeah. crazy. What are you? I don't know what you're talking about. Dating is a phase where you learn each other. Were you're we boyfriend learning, and girlfriend? You, you, you're going to, you know what I'm saying? The dating probably was like, we probably dated. I wasn't allowed to have a girlfriend and boyfriend. I wasn't allowed to date you. That's a whole different <laughs> podcast within itself because he was really technically not allowed to date me. However, <laughs> we were dating before I went to Georgia. When I came back, we were in a relationship. You could miss me with all what you talking about. Okay. These are the hard conversations we was talking about. You know what I'm saying? Why are you lying? Like, I don't... I don't. Yes, we was going out. But that's why... But you you, you, you saying the relation... I don't know. The, the, the relationship got serious and got we real. We were together every freaking day. Like, what do you mean? That means I was dating you every freaking day. Okay. Well, I'm done. Like, shit. You was the only one I was dating. Okay. I mean, what's wrong with dating somebody? I, think I don't you, understand. I think you like, date because you're making like dating somebody is a bad thing. You, that whole time we was learning each other, Sanir. That's where I fell in love with you. What are you talking about? That whole phase. We were in a relationship. You fell in love with me because I wasn't having sex with you while we were in a relationship. That caused me to put more invested time in you. Okay. You know what I'm saying? You got more. You got more attention. You got more of everything because. He was being hard. We were together every day. Now, if you call that dating, I don't know what to call it, but okay. Especially as a kid. As a kid, I ain't never was, well, I didn't have that many people to date. I'm like, oh, I'm dating. I'm like, no, this is my boyfriend. You wasn't saying, okay, so when, when, I'm talking to her. You were saying, this is my girlfriend. But technically, we was dating. That's how you looking tech, at it so now. So basically, yeah, as an adult, you look back, we was actually dating. We wasn't. But so as you just a said, kid, we, oh, look, you, hey, you're my girlfriend. Okay, we together. You know, that's how it goes. You saying? You write me a letter. You want to be my that's boyfriend. How, I'm not Boom. saying how it you're goes. my boyfriend. We in a relationship. That's how it went. You were <laughs> telling people I was your girl. Okay, put it like this. You was off limits. Okay, shit. you so was, was off the market. Was I your? You so know what I'm saying? What I'm like, saying. Stop playing all this dating stuff. So let me ask you. Over here getting frustrated off a title. Look at that. Because you sitting here lying <laughs> like, and capping. I don't understand it. Um, Shit. Because you, I guess it was I guess it wasn't no no dating phase. Because if we you, you want to say that that was the learning stage of our relationship. It was the I will definitely say it was the learning stage of our relationship is the reason why I wasn't having sex with you because I didn't know your well, I knew your intentions. I think you just wanted to have sex. And I was like, yeah, not going for that. So in the midst of you learn me, but we were boyfriend and girlfriend. We were. Okay. Thank you. We was a boyfriend and girlfriend. So stop capping. So what are the things like when we got together? What, well, I don't even think you had an interviewing process. You were just trying to have sex. Mm, yes, basically. That was my whole objective. I mean, it, it, what else it is when you was a fucking teenage boy? I mean, shit, that's shit. Mm-hmm. I'm not a boy. I just, I, I mean, I, <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand the logic. I mean, shit, but, you hired me, shit. <laughs> but okay. I did oh, hire shit. you because I've seen the good qualities that you had. You ain't seen no good qualities. You ain't know me. Dangerous. When did, Before you you, we got in a relationship, you didn't know shit about me. What do you mean? You didn't know shit about me. You when was I came in a relationship Georgia, with me. When I came back from Georgia? I don't know. Whenever. Whenever. Been, the whole time he was in a relationship. When I first came. Okay. Let, let me give you some So history, basically, you, you, you saying you, you could jump in a relationship with somebody and not knowing. And don't even. And just don't have a whole dating phase. I don't think you should. But you're not being. I'm talking about our story. We were kids. <laughs> like, of course. If at my age, if I was ever to date now, I wouldn't do that. But when we were growing up, well, people was talking to people. I ain't never talked. To, well, I've talked to people and I've been in a relationship. But with me and you, we were not talking to each other. We were actually in a relationship. And I don't know why you sitting here saying that. Okay. You got sidetracked to what you was about to say. 
Because you took me back there. I know, because it's triggering something with you. It's triggering me? Yes, that, that title. You think it's triggering me? Yes. Okay, let me stop you playing keep, with you. You keep real. going. Like, shit. You, you don't want be, to be dating you. <laughs> and the whole time, we, uh, we never dated. You know, I dated show ass. I took you out on dates. I took you to the park and shit. Oh, my You know what I'm goodness. saying? We had nice little walks through the hood. Like, shit. <laughs> we, did, we had dates. We did have shit. dates. We dated the entire time. But not one time where you're like, oh, we're just talking. It was like, no, this is my girlfriend. I escorted you to fights and shit. You know what I mean? Shit. What fights you escorted me to? <laughs> Don't you stop lying. Oh, goodness. So the background pro- process. Well, that was the family that we discussed. Did you ever check my references? Did I check your references? No, because I didn't give a fuck about your reference. My whole objective was to have sex and move on. So you got in a relationship with somebody you didn't know, and after you didn't get to have sex, I'm going. I'm not a quitter. I'm not a quitter. So you at know. no point you check my references. Your references didn't matter. So as an adult, because we being funny, we were kids, but as an adult, like, what are the important factors of checking someone references? If, if what you gonna deal with in the future? You know what I'm saying? Is, is she fucking crazy? Is, is she got? 20 baby daddies, you know what I'm saying? Let's check what type of baby daddy she got. She got thug-ass baby daddies or she got professional baby daddies. Ooh, you know what? You know That's what I'm saying? A good question. Like, like, do what? I want to build deal with this bullshit? Do she got ops baby daddies? Because now that's a problem. You know what I'm saying? So checking somebody's background is a big What if big she doesn't issue. have any? I hate the, the negative connotation with baby daddies. What if she didn't have any kids? Like, what would be, because you're just talking about, you know. If she didn't have, you want to check the whole facts. You know what I'm saying? Is she How out do you there, check a whole fact? Is, is she out there in the streets? You, you throw her name out there. You know what I'm saying? Is so she, should a woman check a guy's whole facts? I mean, it depends if it matters to you. Well, why? What do you mean? Why does a because woman's if, past uh, Because matter, if though? a woman is easy to get, if you're, if I always believe, this is what I believe. Basically. If you could have sex with a woman on a one night stand and then you become that become your wife, any other nigga could have a that, that same opportunity but what and have if her that on was one the night first stand. Time she ever did and that. that means shit, it's not the last. That's not true. Shit, whatever. That's I don't know. Not true. I believe it, that it has easy you could get it, the next man could get it. Some people game is better than yours. They might get it in a shorter time. An hour. So those 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 things plays a big part. So let's say so you saying a person that was a hoe can never be redeemed. So he or she, if they have a past, they are incapable of being in a monogamous relationship. I think relationship? I think if you was a hoe, you could be redeemed at a certain age. Why does it have to do with uh, age? Not, okay, maturity. You know what I'm saying? Things because as the older you get, you you start valuing life as a different. You know what I'm saying? So, it, I mean, changes is, is anybody could change, but is it a red flag? Why? Yeah. Though? But don't you know everybody saying? make dumb decisions? When your decisions? girl get mad and, and, and leave the house for the night, is you going to think back, she going to go back to her whole days? Leave you know the what I'm house saying? for the night. Yeah. I mean, people get an argument and they get a heated argument and the person leave. For the night? Shit, for an hour, for whatever. You, you start thinking the old person. You ain't going to think like... I'm gonna her that past start coming up. She is pissed but off. But you didn't know her as that person. So what difference would it make? Yeah, it doesn't even make sense. Like you don't you, know that person at that time of their life, but it's still it's in it's in them. No, I disagree. Everybody, that's just embedded. like somebody that so cheated you, you, is always. You saying things at, that happen in your childhood don't affect you as an adult. Not everything, no. I think it can, but I think once you're healed from that, no. I think that's basically saying, like, once a person does something, that person is always that person. If that's the case, everybody in this world has made decisions that they may not be proud of or is a part of their past, and they may not even be that type of person today. So it's like if you never experienced that, so then I don't think you should be looking at that person I, It's like a that. difference if somebody tripped and made a mistake. But if... If you living in this mistake day after day after day, it's like a crackhead. They was a, a dope fiend for years, and now they clean for ten years, fifteen years. That 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 history doesn't change because that one trip sends you back to that lifestyle. 
Depending on the person. I'm not going to say. One trigger moment. One something. But some people are not triggered by who they used to be. Uh, there, there could be somebody that used to be on drugs and look at it and think nothing at this point. It depends on the person. You can't put well, every person I, well, in the same box. Like, well, you asked me a question. A person history plays a part in who they are. So a cheater, they see a man or a woman and they're automatically tri- triggered and want to cheat again? I dep- I, it depends on how deep in the game they was. No, nah, I, I, I you know don't think saying? everybody. It, it, I mean, you could change. It, it's, it's a percentage of people that change their lifestyle. But if you like a serial cheater, just constantly cheating and cheating, this is. But is that. And a, then is, you, you get in a, a, a healthy relationship and then that maybe person. Maybe you just have a sex that, that person breaks your heart or hurts you. What do you think they're going to go back and do? But maybe they just have a sex addiction and maybe they have an addiction. That's diff- a difference between. Someone okay, maybe okay, and that could be a problem which it wasn't never addressed. You just put a band aid on it, correct? But I'm saying someone that has been healed from their past and they're no longer in that state, it's a total different situation. Um, you you can't, I don't know, you just can't like make someone past be their future, their present, or their forever. And I guess that's why a lot of people hide their past because they don't want to be judged for their past because people like you. You know what I'm saying? People like, what are you going to throw me? I'm just saying. I mean, I'm, I guess, I mean, it's twofold, I guess. You know what I'm saying? It, 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 it's why people hide their past because they use it against them. I don't think you should hide your past because at the end of the day, I think your past is 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 powerful. If you use it in a powerful way in saying this is who I used to be, but this is who I am now. But I do think people sometimes don't want to tell about their past because people like you judge them and it's like that's who they are now i don't believe just because you were this person then it's who you are now we all have a you past. trip and fall i don't know you, you could trip and yeah. fall yeah i see i seen it from the household i was raised in we ain't gonna get in depth with it but um, but you see motherfucker you it, being triggered but that's what i'm saying things is like people they could have and live a certain lifestyle but them whole way is gonna come back But see, because the, <laughs> the, the whole probably never left them. You know what I'm saying? Like and that's shit. show household. That's not everybody in their household. You know like, what I mean? Because at the same time, people be basically cuffing people and they still be hoes. So that's the difference. It ain't that it just left. It's always in you. And that's always who you have been. That's who you are. You haven't made the decision to change. The person got you. And how was you know home. the person ain't made a decision to change? You know what I'm saying? People probably, they tried. And that's what I'm saying. People tried. Some shit just pulled okay, them back. Okay, let's get off the whole thing because everybody has a past. Um, you can't, you, you cannot judge someone based on their past. But according to his but criteria, people, people do would. judge you off your past. I mean, at the end but of the day, that doesn't mean that's you real gotta... life. It's not even judging a person. <laughs> it, 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 it factors <laughs> into the equation. You know what I'm saying? It factors into the equation. Like shit. Bottom line. <laughs> <laughs> because you know what I visualize right shit. now we both as soon as I start trying to talk you rev that bad boy <laughs> <laughs> you know when you like come shit. to a stop sign and somebody trying to race you and you ain't trying to race and they take off as soon as I start talking you got louder start oh, trying to shit. talk faster that that was funny <laughs> oh my goodness dude I'm not in the race to over talk you but that's funny so, you know, relationships, it, it could be tricky based on who's who's involved. And, and I guess the thing is, hold dear to your own I- ideologies, and, you know, and what you value and your moral compass in a relationship, because that looks different depending on who's in it, you know, and, and have those conversations in the beginning of what you want, you know, the rules. I'm just finding out today we were dating. We weren't in a relationship was uh, I'm oblivious to, I guess we were in a, <laughs> monogamous dating a, stage a learning stage you know it's crazy how when people get older I, i'm just going by the chapters in your book shit oh so, yeah because i'm like it's the learning the learning cap. phase so now he's defining us being together as a learning phase which in, in hindsight i will say it was and, and she she just want to take it like that but it really built a strong foundation for what we on so Instead of dating, I think, I, no, I'm saying I like what you're saying because at the end of the day, when I look at it in, in 
in all seriousness, we were learning each other because that was the whole reason why I wouldn't have sex with you is because I didn't feel comfortable with you. I didn't feel like it was something stable and it wasn't real to me. It was real. But at the same time, it's like, you knew it wasn't real to me. Yeah. Like you're just trying to like, we're, we're boyfriend and girlfriend, but you're trying to have sex with me. And so for me, it's like, no, I'm not going to give myself up to you because I don't see the substance in a relationship. So when you said like that, even though we were kids, I'm like, oh, this is my boyfriend. In reality, I was learning you to basically see if this is somebody that I'm willing to give my body to. And as y'all can see, she gave it all to me. Did I? Or did you give it all to me? But the <laughs> that's a you could have it all on the first date. I mean, shit, you, nah, I'm good. you were stretching it all out. <laughs> I'm, I'm good. I'm good. Because if we would have had sex on the first date. I, we, I ain't going to lie. I would have been gone. Yeah, we wouldn't be I here. I would have been, yeah. Um, yeah. And I think I think learning someone before you enter into key elements is, you know, key. You know, and I think it depends on you because some people don't see anything with just having sex with people. Oh, but let's I hold on because to be on sex, let let's because I hear people like this all the time: the power in the P and the power in the D. Is it like they really feel like if you have great sex, it's really going to keep that relationship strong? I don't believe that. It's a total. It's a total mirage. It's, it, it's crazy. You mirage? know what I'm saying? A total what? A mirage, like the something you see in the distance that's not really there. You see a relationship in the distance and it's not really there. Well, you know I think. Saying? Well, I think people. I think the arrogance of people to think like, I mean, let's be honest. You can get. You're not the first and the last person to have good sex, right? I mean, sex comes a dime and a dozen, as they always say. So to think that sex alone is going to keep that person, that's not a reality. But I have to play devil's advocate because that may be a reality to someone. Someone may stay. I have seen people stay and deal with stuff. Be, well, I don't even say it's because of the sex. I think that is the cover-up. That is the the tip of the iceberg. But the real root of the problem is you don't think you can have better. Yeah, self-esteem. Yeah, it it really boils down to a self-esteem issue. So, yeah, I don't think sex is going to keep people. But you have people say 90% of the relationship is sex. And I think that just depends on who you ask. And that's why you have to have those conversations. And I always think when people say that, it's like, okay, so if your mate got into an accident, had cancer, blah, 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 the list goes on, and they weren't able to have sex. And if that's 90% of the relationship, what happens when one of those circumstances happens? Like what happens then? I think true love, you will find other ways to please please yourself. Or please your mate or do something together where you guys have sexual conversations to figure out, you know, remember we used to go to like to the sex store together and different things and like figure stuff out and basically talk about different things. And I think that's what having a healthy relationship is. But if your relationship is based on certain things, you got to understand like I'm with this person because they're cute. Okay, they may be cute as a kid. They may be cute in the twenties and the thirties, but ugly then that's coming. I ain't gonna say ugly is coming because I ain't <laughs> ugly, and I don't. You know what I'm saying? But what I'm saying is they're not gonna look as youthful as they used to look. They're not. There's you know certain things about their body is gonna change. There's things that are gonna change, and so when you're looking at superficial things, it's like how long will that last? But you may be a person that's like, okay, well, when this person is this, 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 I'm upgrading to this, 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 this. But it's like, and that's where you have to be honest with yourself. And that's why I say you got to be alone by yourself to know yourself, to know what you want. Because some people may not want him to build. Some people may be dating to have sex. Some people may be dating to have kids. Some people may be dating to catch their next baller in the hood. People date for different reasons. You yes. just better make sure the person that you're dating is you guys have a commonality on the reason why you're dating. But the thing is, how do you spot these reasons of a person? I guess the I action. just gave you the book, Love Goals, a blueprint to a healthy relationship. I gave you a tent. But where did they buy that? A template. Where did they buy that? They buy it on saniamayo.com. S-A-N-I-Y-Y-A-H-M-A-Y-O.com. Y'all see that buyer book? It'll get some some tips, some gems, so you don't got to be the next man, baby mama, baby daddy. But some people want to be, so stop saying that because 
that's our values and beliefs. <clears throat> you know what I mean? We can't push our values and beliefs on. So some people don't. Why she always got a rebuttal? For nah, because some say. people don't want to be in a relationship. And mm. I've learned that everybody's ideas is not the same. You know, there's a certain principles I stand on, you stand on. But I've heard people say, you know, women have told me they have sex and they don't have to be in a relationship. You know what I'm saying? And yeah, that's a red flag, fella. That's a hoe. But in their mind, they're not a hoe. You know what I'm saying? Their body, <laughs> I, their choice. So my bad. I, I, I'm just fucking married. That's an empowered woman. You know what? I can't. <laughs> what? You, that can't be an empowered woman? You being funny. Oh, shit. I think. Because, my... no, a lot of women feel like a man's going to do it to me anyway, so let me take control of this situation. But it, but You know what I'm saying? But day, you, my, my opinion, you're just losing self-value. But um, that's my opinion. This is my thing. And God showed me something like this, and, I, and I'll and i leave it there. I remember a few years ago, because um, I'm a speaker, right? And I saw this person, they would speak, I'm speaking here, I'm speaking here, I'm speaking here, I'm speaking here, I'm speaking here. And I'm like, dang, I'm not getting that many speaking opportunities, right? So I'm starting to think, like, should I be trying to put myself out there more? And God had to tell me. I did my vision board in, like, 2014, 2013. And one of the things I put on my vision board was exclusive speaker. And God showed me, he said, if you're everywhere all the time and everyone has access, how are you exclusive? Anything that's exclusive, exclusive, everyone does not have access to. And the less access people have to you, the more valuable you are. I was like, that's a coin right there. That's a coin. The less access somebody have to you, the more valuable you become. I said, that's that's deep, God. And I, he took me back to my vision board and he had me read exclusive speaker. He said, so do you really want to be speaking and be everywhere? And I said, no, Lord, I want to stick to the, you know, the script that you have. And so that's how I see myself as a woman. You know, everyone, I've had two sex partners my whole life, one being my husband, and I'm proud of that. And, and you know, some people could say that's corny, but to me, you know, I didn't give everyone access to me, you know, and I pray that my daughters, you know, align with that. I'm not saying they have to have two or one because I don't want them to feel pressure into ever being like I'm not enough because I'm not like my mom. But, but she could, I could have been the, the number one, but she decided not to give it to me. I wasn't your number one. You wasn't my number and one. So we're just going to leave it at that. Yes, you you could have been. Yeah, but the, it didn't happen. I still like have that. the issue with that nigga. If, if I was, if, <laughs> if I was, <laughs> oh my goodness. So at the end of the day, um, my point is this, you know. Now, you, do you ever think about your number can I one? Finish? Yeah, you just rumbling. And Hold if you on, get I want to just say this. So, so no, you he's brought triggered. the shit up. Like, he's triggered. So he's do you tr- do you do you think <laughs> about your number one? Okay, let me finish. Because they say the person they let, never let forget me, their let first time. Let me finish what I'm saying. So, when you hold yourself to a certain value, when you are valuable, not too many people can say they have you in certain ways. Not too many people can even say. They've had certain conversations with me. And that's when you, if you ever want to be a person of value or valuable, don't give everyone access to you. You know, it's too late for a lot of these people. So shit. No, they can start today. They, they, you know, you, people may have had you then, but that don't mean they have to have you now. Okay. But let's get back to the point. So do you, do I think think about about my first? first? No, I do not. So you not never sit around and thought about your, your first experience and nothing like dangerous. I'm 41 years old. What would I be sitting around them? thinking about my first experience for it? Like, what would be the point of thinking about that? That is, doesn't make any logical sense. This is your first. It's, it's a, That's it's a memorable true. moment. Okay. Okay. Do you sit, how, what makes it memorable? Mine was memorable. Because you caught crabs. <laughs> <laughs> That's why it was memorable. I'm sure it was memorable. <laughs> oh my goodness, man! Imagine dealing with crabs and, and don't know what the fuck it is, and, and just embarrassed to tell anybody your shit itching like a motherfucker. Yeah, so yours <laughs> would be memorable, but if two kids are doing something, neither one of them know what they're doing. They're both ver- like, "What's memorable about that? What What would make me reflect on?" Oh, I don't know. I'm just asking. I remember that time when. No, like I'm not sitting here thinking about the first person I had. To, no, I'm not. Okay, I'm just asking. Just wanted to check in. That's all. He's still triggered by that to check this in day because it was supposed to be mine, but yet I wasn't good enough. I didn't know you. But we was dating. We but shit. We were we as you <laughs> said. We, 
we were in the, well, no, let me stop saying I didn't know you. You kind of embedded that just now. I knew you, and that's why I didn't have sex with you, because I knew exactly what you were trying to do. So why would I have sex with you? It, it doesn't make sense. Like, yeah, you my boyfriend, you cool, but no, I'm not going to. He would do stuff like this. So he came to my house one day. You see how she just admitted she cheated on me? What? I didn't che- oh, my goodness. <laughs> I never cheated on him. So we were at, I was at my house. He popped up on me, and he came to my house. This fool walked straight upstairs I'm to aggressive. my bedroom. Let her tell it I'm aggressive. He I just know what I want. Straight upstairs to my bedroom. So I'm fearful that my dad fearful. is about to come like, home any minute now and I'm gonna be in trouble. Talking about, oh, come upstairs. Let me see your room. Like, dude, these little Mickey Mouse games you trying to run. I don't know who you used to running these games on, what females, but I'm not her. <laughs> come downstairs and get out my house. So he would do stuff like that. And it's like, you just trying to have sex with me. And it's like, nah, I'm not. What I come to find out as we got older, she didn't like the aggressive type. I still wouldn't have sex with you, though. Regardless yeah, if, you if that's what you was doing or put, not. Played a little sweet and, uh uh-huh. girl, you so funny. I think you liked it that more than that soft and sweet. I don't like soft. I like, I like you who you were. But at the end of the day, it's like a person tells you who they are. And his whole objective was he wanted to have sex. And it was clear to me. So I'm not having sex with you. I don't know who you think I am, but I'm not the person you can run games on. And no, I see your angle and I'm not with it. And no, is why that's why I didn't have sex with you. So I'm going to stop saying I didn't know you because I knew exactly who you were and what you were doing. Like, I liked you as a boyfriend because outside of him trying to have sex with me, we kicked it every day. Like, he wasn't just my boyfriend. He was my homeboy. We laughed. We hung out. We had so much fun together. Like, but that whole keep trying to have sex with me was just like a complete turn. <laughs> it I'm was. Like, no. I, I, I guess because I... I... I guess I felt like, hey, if you don't try, you won't get it. You know what I'm saying? So every moment opportunity I, I did and until until the time that it came and I couldn't perform. <laughs> I was so embarrassed. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Like <laughs> uh, the finally time that the she was like, time, yes. And I, I was, was like, I can't like... even get hard. I was too excited. I was like, the time is here. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> this sucker would not move. I was oh, like, my oh my, I was so embarrassed. That, I've never been embarrassed <laughs> like that in my life. Cause I, what was you actually thinking? Like, you know what I'm saying? Just like, well, you got to think like this too. Even though I had sex before, I was still inexperienced. So I didn't know what was going on. And I was just like, okay, you know what I mean? So <laughs> it, I could tell his face expression, he was embarrassed, but we chopped it up to the game. You know, I don't even think we talked about it after that. Like, it was. <laughs> <laughs> it was an uh, don't talk about that shit. Oh, so it was like a, a, a conversation. Like, I can't remember if I felt bad for him or what. So, because I know he really wanted to do yeah, it really, I was too really bad. Excited. I because he fine. was like excited when I finally agreed. So then I was just like, uh, you know, okay. Like, I didn't know what to think, but it was a conversation that we, we didn't talk about that again until like years later. So it was like we never talked about it. We just went about our day, had fun, and that was the end of that. That's crazy. Man, brother, go ahead and wrap this up on the, um, this episode up. And don't try to get your motivational speech because I'm going to come in with one too. So go ahead. Do yours first. All right, y'all. So um, I got the mic. So we're going to get this motivational speech out. Speech. So if you're out there in the field and you just need love, because we all need love, don't search for love. Search for a friendship. Because if you build a friendship with somebody, the love is going to come automatic. You know what I'm saying? And you building a foundation off of friendship is way more powerful of trying to build a foundation off of sex, a foundation off of money, a foundation off of looks. Build a friend. Find a friend. You know what I'm saying? And and work from there. That's all I got to say. Work from a friendship. I guess he did the closing. So, and until next time, as we always say, continue to break cycles. Y'all stay blessed.